Hello and welcome back and that is right today we are reviewing this. This is the Terramaster D5, a hybrid hard drive and NVMe SSD system. Rocking out the gate with a couple of SATA 3.5 inch bays that can be populated with 2.5 inch SATA as well. We'll talk about that later on. And the system also has three M.2 NVMe slots inside giving you five storage bays across two different storage mediums and the device being a direct attached storage system allows you to connect via USB 3.2 Gen 2. That is right, you can connect to this with a 1000 megabytes per second USB connection and therefore I would say 80% of the audience are immediately going to say, what's the point of that? I'm sorry, are you from the past? <laughs> You've got all of that storage, all of that performance, all of that wonderful, wonderful throughput, and you've bottlenecked it all to hell on that USB connection there on the rear. And I'll be straight with you, that was very much my first impressions when I first heard about this device, and indeed, uh, the D8 hybrid version of this device that is rocking out the gate very soon on crowdfunding. However, with its 179 at 200 nicker price tag, it has to be said that for a two hard drive and three NVMe storage system, to act as your next USB enclosure, it's actually pretty darn good value. Now, had they gone down the road of included Thunderbolt connectivity on this, USB 3.2 Gen 2 X2 connectivity, or even USB 4 connectivity, this would be a very different conversation because that, of course, would bring up the pricing because of the different components that are, you know, such as USB and NVMe controllers to adapt and configure and output via USB on this device. And let's not go into Intel and its wonderful Thunderbolt licensing there and certification processes. But let's talk about this device. Who's it for? What can it do? The chassis design of this device is very much in the wheelhouse of the later NAS releases uh, that Terramaster have been rocking out the gate in 2024. You've got your click and load storage drives there to install a drive very easily. Nice and simple. Click, load, you get your drive pop it inside and boom, you are good to go. You can go ahead with one drive if you like, you can install two. And again, SATA SSDs, we've got going to later on in this video, going ahead with Kingston's DC600M uh, enterprise grade SSDs there, they're going to be going inside this. And of course, if you go for standard class hard drives, you can go all the way up to 24 TBs. Later on, during the performance testing, we installed two Seagate 24 TB Iron Wolf Pro uh, hard drives inside this in a RAID 1 environment works straight away. Now, when it comes to the NVMEs inside this system, it has to be said that they are on a side panel loading inside here with three M.2 NVME bays, each of which uh, is 2280 in length, and each of them, by the way, is times one speed as well. So regardless of whether you go ahead and install uh, three times four drives or even four times four drives, you are going to be limited on each one to 1,000 megabytes per second there. In our testing, we went ahead again with Kingston again, and this is the 1000B uh, M.2 NVME me gen 3 ssds inside this system and the performance numbers we saw with this system during its operation i'm not going to say we're breathtaking but i will say they still were well within the confines of that usb connection so for example when we were utilizing uh standard windows transfers during windows transfers the hard drives, uh, that was two Seagate 24TBs in a RAID 1 environment. We achieved speeds of 262 megabytes per second peak uh, write performance there. And transferring 20 gigabytes of data took a little under 2 minutes and 10 seconds. Now, when it came to utilizing the single NVMe uh, bay in there, so rather than use all three, I just went for a benchmark of a 500 gig SSD in one of those slots. Uh, to transfer the same 20 gigabytes of data took 1 minute and 14 seconds with a peak performance of 572 megabytes per second. Finally, they was utilizing two of those Kingston uh, uh, 600M. Uh, SSDs SATA based in a RAID 1 environment and we achieved uh, peak speeds of, of the highest so far 630 megabytes per second which meant that transfer of 20 gig of data took just one minute and nine seconds so straight away a lot of you are already going to be wondering those numbers none of those would seemingly fully saturate that external connection and indeed that's true had you gone ahead and installed two SATA SSDs inside here, each of those SATA SSDs would give you somewhere in the region of between four and 500 megabytes per second. And in a RAID 1 environment, that does mean that at least during read and write operations, there is the potential to be accessing two drives simultaneously with the data being read and written to at the same 
time deal, which can provide a performance boost. But still, nonetheless, neither of those on their own would have been able to fully saturate a 10G external connection. Now, when it comes to the SSDs, on the other hand there, because this system and the way it is utilizing the available lanes inside at times one on each of them, to, uh, three times one lane speed limits you to just 1000 megabytes per second total possible bandwidth saturation but realistically with a single drive you're not going to be able to fully saturate this it should be highlighted that at least in the case of the raid on those nvmes with a um, os based raid with your uh, client system you know managing that raid there you most certainly would be able to fully saturate both read and write and indeed on their own manufacturers pages uh, terramaster do state that with those three nvmes you are able to saturate four 460 to 480 megabytes per second both up and down now going back to that performance uh, when we looked at aja speed performance benchmarks there when it came to the hard drives the two hard drives again in a raid one environment gave us 240 megabytes per second write and 260 megabytes per second speed on average when it came to the m2 nvme again we saw 550 megabytes per second average write but when it came to read we saw a huge jump up there on the benchmark we were going forward with aja at 928 megabytes per second average read uh, now when it came to the two SATA drives in a RAID 1 environment, we saw 804 write over 680 read on average during the continuous tests all the way through. So definitely better numbers there, but of course those are synthetic benchmarks overall. And finally, we went ahead with utilizing uh, Crystal Disk. And with Crystal Disk, we saw performance numbers are with two hard drives in a RAID 1 of 278 over 267. Uh, when it came to the NVMEs, we managed to fully saturate at 1060 over uh, 590 megabytes per second. And finally, with the two SSD uh, SATA SSDs, we saw 662 megabytes over 680 megabytes with those two in a RAID 1 array there. So performance numbers very varied, full saturation largely not made in the majority of those tests but it has to be said with a suitable os rate controller you probably would get better numbers on that usb now talking a little bit more about the capabilities and how it does or doesn't hit those benchmarks number one on the rear of the device we do have that raid switch there remember when i mentioned earlier on that the m2 nvmes on this do not have raid support at least on the box and you have to rely on an os rate that is not the case with the two SATA bays there on the front. The two SATA bays there, whether you want to utilize hard drives or SSDs, allow you to use a physical switch on the rear that allows you to set them as just a bunch of drives, set them as single individual, set them as a RAID 0 to combine them together with no kind of uh, 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 parity or uh, redundancy. And finally, have them as a RAID 1 where the two drives are effectively mirroring with read and write operations simultaneously. Now, a lot of users are going to be a little disappointed that none of that is included with the M2 NVMEs and you're going to have to run an OS RAID. But again, at this price point, I'm prepared to give it just a wee bit of a benefit of the doubt. That said, one of the things I'm less keen on uh, is kind of confusion about some of the internal components there. There is two main um, types of controller that we want to focus on in there. There's an ASM3074 uh, controller there, and that is the USB controller. But that USB controller, there's a USB 3.2 Gen 2 X2 20 gigabit usb controller so i can't quite figure out why they're using such a, a controller that would have potentially opened the door to an external 20 gig connection but this system still is a standard usb 3.2 gen 2 external there at 10 gigabit when it came to the nvmes um, i found a series of rtl uh, 9210 controllers that are nvme to usb controllers so there is controllers dedicated to each of the m2 nvmes to manage the workflow of data through the whole system ultimately you definitely know what they've built here and when they have worked within those usb confines it looks a lot if i had to say that they were maybe hoping that this system would be able to output to USB 20 gig um, or even possibly USB 4 down the line, but ultimately found that that would have required either a lot of compromise or scaling up the production price of this. And therefore, to manage it within that price point, a lot of compromises have had to have been made there in terms of that physical configuration. Again, at 179 to 200 NICA, that's still all right for me. And with the physical design being pretty modest all the way through, 
And I would argue that our operation when the system was running, if we flick to our noise now, You can see that during full operation of both the hard drives and the SSDs that we never saw um, the decibel really go outside of 24 to 28 dBA there when the drives were being accessed full motion there over an SMB, uh, not an SMB, a uh, Windows transfer standard over USB. So in terms of physical footprint, it's very, very small. And add to that the fact that as this system is quite low powered as it is with quite a modest PSU there, you can actually go ahead and run this on quite modest power units. We've got a video coming up soon where we're talking about powering NAS devices via USB power adapters. And I'll say right now that using this power adapter here, the Shargeek Geek 140, I used this, a USB cable and a USB Type-C to barrel jack converter. This was only about $4.70. We got that, put that inside, and this supplied enough power to power the three NVMEs and two SATA SSDs inside, not hard drives, and allowed it to power for up to six to seven hours. So for those of you that are looking for a comprehensive multi-bay portable powered solution, these two together gave quite a high-end amount of high-performance storage media and capability on the go. Yes, you're gonna to need to buy an additional battery purchase, but at the very least, it does open the door to this being not only a portable device in terms of weight and scale, but a portable device in terms of powering there on the rear. Ultimately, the Terramaster D5 Hybrid, I'm not gonna say, is gonna blow your socks off in terms of overall performance, but that's the point. I don't think it's designed to be that. It's not trying to give you high speed. It's trying to give you consistent speed because all the way through our benchmarks we found that the system was at least able to maintain that not out of this world performance but mid-tier performance for an exceedingly long amount of time and i think that is the target focus of this device obviously that's going to depend on the file types that you use and file frequency versus volume but if you are looking for uh, a decent capacity but modest storage DAS box where you're going to manage the RAID on your operating system, this is a great little choice for the price point. It's just a shame that clear compromises have had to have been made in the hardware architecture along the way. Now, the bigger version of this, as mentioned, the D8 hybrid, which has got five SATA bays and those same three NVMe bays on the side, is about to, if time of recording it may already be, on crowdfunding, arriving at about 199 with an RRP of uh, 299 at traditional retail there, ultimately largely the same price as this. So if this sounds interesting to you and you're in a rush, and I've, you know, I've put forward some good cases for it in your eyes, go ahead and use it. There's a link in the description. Lovely stuff. Affiliate marketing. We get a little fee. But I'll say right now, if you're not in a rush, and this sounds interesting to you, chuck all that in the bin and just go for the crowdfunding one because it's going to cost the same amount of 199 and you get a bunch more storage space. We don't make anything from it, but I tell you right now, that's a better choice overall if you're going to go down that road. But let me know what you guys think of this in the description below. I think it's all right in terms of design. Again, I just think in some ways it's clearly had its wings clipped. What do you guys think? Do, are you the sort of user this is aimed at? Let me know. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.